I have two questions here on fashion. I don't know why I got them, because I'm not glamorous at all, as my children tell me. The first one says, is it wrong to be fashionable yet godly? And the second one says, why do ladies or girls, women even, even married ones, have to expose their breasts and buttocks and pubic hair because of fashion? <clears throat> this is a very interesting question. Um, as women, we very often want to look nice. Some of us even would like to look spectacular, would like to look so nice that when we walk into a room, everybody just stops and stares at us. We need to realize that beyond the women we are, or beyond the girls we are in the flesh, we're also people in the spirit. And we have to ensure that our lives give honor and glory to God. It's very, very possible to be well-dressed, to be beautifully turned out without exposing parts of your body. Why don't we want to expose parts of our body? What is the problem with parts of our body? Uh, even after I was married <clears throat> and I had two children, my skirts were up to here. And now my skirts sweep the whole of Lagos. And at the time my skirts were up to here, I was working in NMPC, I couldn't understand why men would be talking to me everywhere I turned. I couldn't understand why men would be calling me, hey, fine girl, you, come here. And I used to wonder what the problem was. But now I think I understand better. When you expose the parts of your body, it's like an invitation. And it almost even sets us back to what we discussed just before now. Men and women are different. The way a man looks at something is different from the way a woman looks at it. And the minute you begin to realize that the way the man looks at it already sets him off, then you might be less likely to want to expose the parts of your body. I imagine maybe in 10 years' time, the latest fashion will be not wearing clothes at all because I don't know what else there is to do. I mean, I don't add up a new style, Pastor Nike says. Perhaps that's where we're going. But we must ensure that whatever we do brings glory to God. We must ensure that we are well turned out. The Bible says, let everything be done decently and in order. That is the place where we're to be found. There's, no, there's nothing lofty about exposing the parts of your body. There's nothing good about it. There's nothing noble about it. It, it, it just doesn't have anything that can be said for it. So I believe we should actually look for uh, clothes and fashion that covers. It, it, it doesn't mean you're not fashionable. Thank you, Pastor Delacro. Please, if you agree with that, I mean, <laughs> let's appreciate the, because in this day of, you have something to say on that. Okay, let me run. In this day of, um, it seems like, um, the, the, the fashion is to expose everything, but um, I, I don't think it's right. We should be modest, and I think we should be well covered up as ladies, and even as guys too, because I think the guys too these days, it's, it's all coming from the Western world, I think. The guys too, they're looking for what to expose, so they're trying to drop their, the, <laughs> the jeans. Where that came from, okay. I was told that the sagging comes from the prisons, that when people are put in prison, they're not given belts for their trousers, so they don't hang themselves with the belts. So the people that had been to prison and come out were used to sagging their trousers because they weren't given belts. And uh, what, a, what a thing for a child of God to be led by a prison. So I think, <laughs> thank you for that insight. I told you these were resource people, you see. We, that means that we should find out the background of a thing and not just follow blindly. I remember recently telling my kids that, um, you know, all these people you see on, on TV, you know, um, what's that channel? Disney Channel and all that, young people. Okay, fine. They wear um, a lot of jumpers, you know, sometimes they wear the long um, sweater first and then wear the short sleeves t shirt on top so that the Longer one is showing. I thought the, the smaller one was supposed to be inside to keep you warm. And then, but they started wearing it the other way around. Okay, and there's nothing wrong in that. And there's a fashion now. They actually make the outfit. It's one piece, but it looks like, you know. So, but I just, there's nothing wrong in that anyway. But I think it came from, maybe they were tired of wearing the short one inside. 
So I said, actually, you see, their country is usually very cold, you know. You know that. I was telling them, well, most times they go only during the summer, so they don't realize it's usually very cold. So they have to look for creative ways to dress without being boring or wearing long whatever all the time. So when we just see them on TV and feel, oh, this is the latest thing, so we wear it like that, and you are sweating, you know. So I think it's always good to find out the background of something and not just follow it blindly. Thanks. Thank you very much. Please, to add to that, um, you know, when guys sag, they show, they reveal their um, boxers shirt. But I think there's a problem because it shows that you don't understand the difference between um, um, an underwear and outerwear. Okay, there's something wrong with the English. Now, to also look at the um, ladies that expose their breast. Of course, I'm aware that some of the people who have been sexually abused, they, a lot of them usually do that. But um, it shows that we don't understand the difference between our private parts and our public parts. Okay, if you don't understand it up till now, then you can um, as well compare it with a, a private company and a public company. The shares of a private company is not meant for public sale. Okay, the shares of public company, even a dog can subscribe. Praise the Lord. So when you see ladies, some of them will say to, to you that, oh, I was raped, okay, because I reviewed my breast. And, and I always say to them, see, when you begin to flaunt your private part as a public part, you must be ready for an initial public offer. So the guys, the guys have a right to subscribe for your IPO. So please keep private parts private. Thank you. Bible talks about in Romans 12 talking about the renewal of the mind. I remember before I gave my life to Christ, there were some there were some things I did then, very stupid things. And after I'd given my life to Christ, when the Holy Spirit started changing my mind, I, I looked back at those things and I was like, You are very, very stupid. And you know, those days, con con when we we're talking about the issue of fashion, some of my friends would go to the US and they would bring in second hand prison wares as in that was what we used to call it then ah do you have your prison wares we're going to the party you know these old prison wares whereby you have numbers you have numbers that this is your own room a306 ah you'll be so happy you now wear second hand prison wares you now go to the party and everybody's telling you look so cool and you're feeling very very nice i don't know i, I was and they were sold for very exorbitant prices. And I was feeling cool wearing American prison wares. And today, I was just, there was a day I was passing through Elisha. And I saw there's, there's, it, there's um, a prison there, Elisha prisons. I now saw the uniform those prisoners were wearing. They were wearing this white cap, small danshiki with a nika. And I said, that's the same thing you were wearing. And I was like, I had to ask myself, so... I, will, I used my money to buy the clothes meant for prisoners, and I wore it to the party, and I, and I danced till morning. I was like, something was wrong with your mind. Where I'm going exactly is, when you get born again, allow God, allow the Holy Spirit renew your mind. It will reveal your stupidity on a daily basis, and God will help you, and you live a maximized life.